Okay, today's short video lesson is an extension of molar mass number one, the video that was completed the other day. In that video, what we did was we defined molar mass and we used an analogy that involved massing uh, 12 16 penny nails and coming up with a relationship that allowed us to count nails without actually counting nails. So, what I want to do to, to start the lesson today is to remind you that the definition of molar mass is a concept that allows us to count atoms without actually counting them. So we have a defined mass of a particular element or a particular compound or a particular molecule and we relate that to this concept of the mole and we'll come back to that in a minute. Using that ratio we then can count quantities of atoms, molecules, or compounds without actually having to count them. And the reason this is a concern is because atoms are tiny and small amounts of atoms and molecules or compounds contain enormous quantities of particles. Quantities of particles with numbers so large that they cannot be counted using practical methods like counting marbles out of a bin, for example. All right, so to reiterate what we learned the other day, what we did was we discovered that a dozen 16 penny nails had a mass of 114.5 grams. We used that in a ratio in order to do calculations. By the same token, I related that to the idea of molar mass which is very similar in how it's structured. So in this case, we're using the molar mass of carbon, which is 12 grams per mole. The, the tricky part here is realizing that you can think of the mole like you think of a dozen. Everybody knows that a dozen is, is 12. What you need to wrap your mind around here is that one mole is equal to six times 10 to the 23rd atoms. This number is very big. It has to be because, again, small numbers, small quantities of atoms, molecules, or compounds contain mind-boggling amounts of particles. So this relationship has to involve a quantity in the denominator of this fraction that it's much bigger than 12. Hence, the mole is 6 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. How can we use these quantities to do a calculation? So what we're going to be doing today is actually using these two quantities. First, the relationship with the nails to get your mind warmed up. And then what we're going to do is some calculations using mass amounts, first of carbon and then of sodium. So example number one. Let's say we've got about 572.5 grams of 16 penny nails. And we want to know how many nails are in that mass quantity. Once again, we're going to use this concept that we worked out the other day, that 114.5 grams of 16 penny nails is the mass of exactly a dozen of them. So relating these two quantities together, we're going to take the 572.5 grams of nails and we divide it by this ratio. And when we do that, we see that without having to count anything, that in uh, this 572 and a half grams of nails, there's five dozen nails or a total of 60 nails. Now I want to draw your attention back to, to, to the division that we did over here on the left side of the diagram. If you look closely at the units, so we have 572.5 grams of nails and we're dividing that by a ratio that has units of grams, per na uh, grams of nails per dozen. So if your algebra is pretty good, what you realize here is that the grams of nails, the mass quantities here are actually canceling out and we've solved for the unit dozen. And then because we know that there's 12 nails in a dozen, five times 12 is 60. So we know we have 60 nails in 572.5 grams of nails. Now, what I wanna introduce in this video is this concept of unit multiplier method in order to do calculations like this. Because this is gonna be a very um, important process to learn in terms of learning chemistry. So all I've done is represent the calculation we did on the previous page. 
in a different way. So we start out with our 572.5 grams of nails over 1. And in unimultiplier method, what we're going to do is multiply this starting quantity by another fraction that's been set up in such a way that the units are going to cancel. Now those of you with strong math skills are going to notice right off the bat that the way I'm representing this here is no different than the previous page. It's just represented um, in a different format. So we're now taking this fraction, which is 572 and a half grams over 1 and multiplying it times this relationship, um, which has been inverted. So it's represented now by its units one dozen over 114.5 grams. And what you can see happens here is that the mass of the nails that we start with is canceling out with the mass of the nails the gram quantity that's associated with the number 114.5 grams. Same as the previous page. The problem ends up producing the same number, five dozen nails, and five times 12 is 60. This is called unit multiplier method. The focus being on the units and how the units cancel with one another to produce what it is you're trying to solve for, which in this case is the total number of atoms or the total number of nails in this case. In a second, it will be the total number of atoms. So now, when we apply this concept to chemistry, again, we're gonna, we have two things here that we need to um, focus on that, that are a requirement for being able to solve a problem like this. The first is the quantity of molar mass for whatever it is that we're dealing with. In this case, it's going to be carbon. So the molar mass of carbon is 12 grams of carbon per mole, where one mole is 6 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Now, the, the, the challenge in this example is to determine the number of atoms in 150 grams of carbon. So we set the problem up exactly like we did for the problem regarding the nails. So we have 150 grams of carbon, and we're going to divide that by its molar mass. So we have 150 grams of carbon being divided by 12 grams over one mole. So we have grams over grams over a mole. And those of you, again, with, with math skills, realize that the mass quantities here are canceling out. And we've actually solved for the unit mole. This representation may be easier for some of you um, to understand. Um, by comparison to the unit multiplier method, which we're going to look at next. So 150 grams of carbon divided by 12 grams divided by mole is going to equal 12 and a half moles, as I show here. Now, we have one more step, which we really didn't show in the last problem, because in the last problem, uh, there, there was far more simplicity. In this case now, we've instead of having dozens, we have moles, 12 and a half moles. That's a lot of carbon atoms. We need to know what the atoms are, so we're going to multiply our moles times Avogadro's number, 6 times 10 to the 23rd atoms over mole. And you see what happens is that the moles cancel out. This unit is canceling, and we've successfully um, solved for the atoms. So in, the, in this case, that turns out to be 7.5 times 10 to the 24th atoms of carbon. 7.5 times 10 to the 24th atoms of carbon in 150 grams. Now, this is what the same problem looks like using the unit multiplier method. Again, when we use unit multiplier, we start by writing down what we've been given. So we have 150 grams of carbon. And we're going to multiply that directly by a new fraction, which is essentially the same thing as the last problem. In other words, we're dividing 150 grams by 12 grams over a mole. And when, when we rearrange that using the algebra, that's the same difference as multiplying 150 grams times 1 mole over 12 grams. We're still dividing 150 by 12. What we see here, though, is that the mass unit, grams, per, or grams uh, times carbon, is canceling with this unit, grams times carbon. So in this middle step, we've actually solved for the moles. And then what I'm showing here is that whatever we have in this step 
is multiplied directly then times Avogadro's number again and we see that the moles here are canceling with the moles here so that we've solved for atoms and we get the same number. So moles here have canceled with the moles here and we get the same number. Ultimately in your studies this is where you need to be able to go. You must be able to use unit multiplier method to solve chemical problems. Now what we're going to do is we're going to solve example number three freehand. So I'm going to I'm going to have you watch how this is done and then the next day the next time we meet in class we will practice examples of these problems on the board and then eventually we'll whiteboard this material. All right. So what I want to know is how many atoms of sodium are in one gram of sodium. All right. The molar mass of sodium is shown here on the right. It's 23 grams of sodium atoms per mole. Um, just uh, to uh, emphasize something, um, the molar mass here has been rounded up. If we actually look at a periodic table, the number that you're going to find on the table is going to be 22.99. But in order to simplify what we're doing here in this lesson, I'm just I, all I've done is rounded this off to 23 grams of sodium per mole. So to start the problem, what I'm going to do is we're going to use unit multiplier method, but we'll do this two different ways. So to be consistent with the first method that we used in the previous examples, I'm going to start by taking one gram of sodium and dividing directly by the molar mass. Now, you can see here that, again, if you're paying attention to the units that we're actually taking grams of sodium and dividing that by grams of sodium over mole. So we've actually solved for a mole here. Utilizing a calculator, and this is the one uh, that I recommend uh, for uh, chemistry calculations, we have 1 which is going to be divided by 23. So we have got 0.04 three five I'm rounding moles of Na. Now we're halfway home. We want to know the total number of atoms that were in this one gram sample. So now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by Avogadro's number And we see what we've got is 2.6 times 10 to the 22nd atoms of sodium. Okay, so this is method number one. Method number two is set up similarly. We start out with one gram of sodium. This is multiplied by the molar mass, which has been inverted. So we have one mole of Na over 23 grams of Na. This quantity is over 1. The mass units cancel out. And we end up with 0.0435 mole of Na at this step. And then we multiply by Avogadro's number. Per mole this is over 1 and we see GAN moles cancels and we're left with 2.6 times 10 to the 22nd atoms of Na.